of TV Talk. It's Monday, and that means it's Gargoyles Day. And this week's episode was The Mirror. When Demona gets her hands on the mirror of Titania, she summons forth the mischievous puck in her plans to rid the world, or at least Manhattan, of the gargoyles. But Puck, being a mischievous sort of fae, decides to have a little bit of fun with Demona and ends up causing a lot of trouble for Elisa and the gargoyles. Okay, things I liked about this episode. I basically liked everything about this episode. This is one of my top favorites, not only for season two, but for the Gargoyle series. Um, one of the many, many things I loved about this episode was that we are officially introduced to Puck in this episode. Now, notice I used the word officially introduced. This is because we have seen Puck before, all the way back in season one. We just don't know that we've seen him yet. And I promise I will get into why that is when it becomes more relevant. Um, but we do see Puck in this episode, and I absolutely love the design for Puck in this episode. They make him kind of look like a little, well, not a little elf, but they, they make his design look very elven. Now, not like the elves from the Lord of the live-action Lord of the Rings trilogy. This is a very abstract concept of an elf. Um, very, very, he's got the pointed ears, he's very lengthy and thin, um, which is really how I envision elves when I'm reading um, books, particularly children's books. Uh, again, he, he does, they do not make him look like the elves from Lord of the Rings or the elves from the Dragon Prince at all, um, but still a really nice design. I absolutely love the design for him. Um, they do also drop a little nugget of who Puck might actually be in this episode. Um, the sharp ears among you might pick that up. Uh, if you do know, please don't say anything in the comments until I actually do the big reveal later on in the Season 2 TV Talk reviews. Um, second off, part of the mischief of what Puck does, and this is really not a spoiler because it's going on throughout the whole episode, is that he first turns Elisa into a gargoyle, then he turns all the humans into gargoyles, and then he turns the gargoyles, minus Demona, into humans. So yeah, Puck has a lot of fun with Demona in this episode, um, and inadvertently the gargoyles and Elisa as well. Now, one of the things, why did I mention this? This is because this is the first episode where we start to notice Goliath and Elisa's relationship is moving beyond the friend zone. Um, they like each other, but they seem to be, particularly starting in this episode, like each other as more than friends. Um, this is going to become important later on. Um, so we start to notice this shift in their relationship. Um, now, has Demona noticed this shift and that's why she has this extreme hatred of Elisa? Or is it just because Goliath trusts Elisa and Elisa's human? Or what? You know, I don't know. They don't really reveal that in here. Um... I want to say that Demona maybe does know about this shift in the relationship um, between Goliath and Elisa, but I don't think Demona is the kind of character that sees things much past her own needs. Um, I don't think she really um, sees things as others see them or even cares to. If it doesn't suit if it doesn't fit her um, current plan or whatever she's trying to do, she doesn't really see it, in my opinion. That's kind of the persona she gives off. Um, I don't even think the other gargoyles have really picked up on this. I don't even think Goliath and Elisa have picked up on it until now. Um, but this episode really starts to show that shift, and there will be other cases where we will see it. Um, Number two, I really liked, um, why I brought that up, is I really liked Elisa's design as a gargoyle. Um, most of the other humans, when they designed them, when they did, when the animators designed them as gargoyles, I don't want to say abstract, but there's no uniqueness to them. Um, they basically, one looks pretty much like the other. 
Um, there may be some subtle differences, but that's about it. Uh, Elisa, they took care to make her look very unique. And I think it's because she was a main character. And they were trying to make this shift or show this shift in hers and Goliath's relationship. I know I'm coming back to that a lot, but it is very prevalent in this episode. That's why. Um... But they did a wonderful design with her. They kept most of her human physique in it, like her, her body structure, her body type, her skin color, her hair color, her hair length. But they added gargoyle features to her, the wings, the tail, the talons, um, the horns, the fangs. And they didn't change her much. There wasn't a big drastic change in her overall appearance, um, which is kind of what I like. The change was very subtle. Uh, most of the other humans that we see having been turned into gargoyles in this episode, the change was very drastic. You could tell there was this big shift from human to gargoyle in there, but hers was just so subtle, and I thought that sub subtlety was very, very nice. Uh, now, the humans, the gargoyles' human forms... They were okay. Um, some of them were not exactly how we would have pictured the gargoyles as humans, um, i.e. the trio is not exactly, their human forms were not exactly how I would have pictured them. Um, Goliath and Hudson, dead on how I would have pictured them as humans. Um, Bronx is, well, he didn't really turn into a human, he turned into a dog, but his canine, um, non-gargoyle canine form is almost dead on how I would have pictured him if he wasn't a gargoyle. So half, and, um, half of them were how I would have pictured them as non-gargoyles and half of them weren't. Um, and the ending also is a big, big thing. Um, and it is a game changer. The ending is a big game changer in the series. Uh, I do not want to get too much into that until it becomes relevant, so I'm going to just leave it as that. It is a game changer. It will become important later on in the series, um, but we're going to leave it at that for the time being. Okay, things I didn't like about this episode. Nothing. <coughs> I could find absolutely nothing wrong with this episode. This is my per one of my personal favorite episodes, and if I had to rank them by number, this episode would probably be within the top five, at least the top ten episodes of my personal favorite Gargoyle episodes. Um, I mean, virtually there was nothing I would have changed about this. Um, even the ending, when I don't have to say it's much of a spoiler when I say... Um, almost everything goes back to normal. That isn't something I would have changed. I would have left it just the way it is. So, um, yeah, um, nothing I didn't like about this episode, nothing I'm going to harp on about why I didn't like it, because there is nothing. Okay, feel free to leave your comments and questions in the comment section. I do love to read those. Please like and share this video if you're watching on Facebook, or like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you're watching on YouTube. And feel free to follow me on Wattpad, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, and Divian Art. I do have my name for those five sites right there on the screen, as well as the pictures I use for the icons. Please note that all pictures seen within this video do belong to the respective artists. I own absolutely nothing. The links for the five sites I mentioned will be in the description section if that makes it any easier for you guys to locate my pages on those sites. And if you're watching on YouTube, the link for my Facebook page will be in the description section. And if you're watching on Facebook, the link for my YouTube channel will be in the description section. Okay, quick reminder on my comment rules. Okay, feel free to check out my other Gargoyles and Detox videos. TV talk videos. And my other videos. Okay, before I sign off, a few things I'd like to touch on. First off, um, my YouTube, for my YouTube 
subscribers. Any of my backlog videos that cannot be found on YouTube are on my Facebook page. Again, the link will be in the description section. And for my Facebook friends, any of my backlog videos that cannot be found on Facebook are on my YouTube channel. Again, the link is in the description section. Finally, we will be having, I will have to, within the next few months, put Agents of Shields on hold, and I will be coming to an end within the next few months of DreamWorks Dragons. So what does that mean? That means that there will be an opening for a TV talk video for Friday and one for Sunday. What does that also mean? That also means that you guys get to pick which show will be on which day. Now for Friday, your choices are Night to the Zodiac, My Little Pony, King of the Hill, and Wolf's Reign. For Sunday, it's Dot Hack Sign, Horseland, Inuyasha, and Outlaw Star. Voting is very, very simple. All you have to do is write down which one of the four shows listed for each day you would like me to do a review video on in the comment section, and or like or love a positive comment on one of the shows on the shows listed, and whichever one gets the most votes is the one I'll do a video on. Please keep in mind that in that dislikes and negative comments do not count as votes. If My Little Pony is is selected for Friday's next TV talk video, I will be starting with Generation 1 and then moving into Friendship is Magic. Voting will be until April 10th, and I forgot to change that again, so I do apologize for that, for Friday and May 10th for Sunday. I will give you an update if I have to change the um, poll closing dates. You may vote as many times as you wish, but in the event of a tie or absolutely no votes, I do have the final say. So far, it stands for Friday, one vote for My Little Pony, and for Sunday, one vote for Horseland. However, there is six months left until Friday for, um, for the Friday poll and seven months for the Sunday poll, so that is plenty of time for you guys to get your votes in and make your voices known. Okay, as always, thank you for watching. And have a very nice day.